Hey, welcome back to the Big Red Zone. We are very excited for today's show. Remember, new episodes come out every Wednesday. You can find us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Leave us a rating on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Big Red Zone. And tell a friend. Keep helping us grow the podcast. This week, we're talking everything. NBA, MLB, and even some NFL. All that more on this week's episode of the Big Red Zone. Welcome to the podcast. This is the Big Red Zone. I'm your host, Big Red. As always, I am joined by Danny Football. What up? Producer John. Yes, sir. And before we get into the episode, uh, what a great... What a great episode last week when we had Kevin from Big Brother on. On legend. Legend Absolute of Massachusetts. Roller coaster. Roller coaster of an episode, man. If if you haven't listened to it yet, listen to it after this or stop right now and listen to it first. Whatever. Just listen to that episode because it was it was quite a ride. What a time to be on the big red zone. We got a bunch of moms um, loving it. We have oh some moms God. loving it. Tons of moms. I mean, said he was the big fan. Like the moms love him. Shout they, out to Inez Franco, fans. my girl Inez. Inez, is that your is that your girl Inez? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Queen T. Queen T. Thanks, Queen T, for listening. Um, on that, uh, with that, it was a crazy week. Girl, um, obviously we had the NBA All Star Game, uh, which we're going to talk about, and their Celtics are made a little run before the end of the break. Um, There was some big news today in the NFL. Uh, Dak Prescott finally got the respect he deserves and got a gigantic contract. Uh, And MLB, JBJ signed with the Brewers, and we'll talk about the Red Sox to uh, spring training and all that good stuff. But first, let's start with the NBA. Uh, so, uh, let's we'll start with the all-star game. Uh, Danny Fulber, what are your initial thoughts of the all-star game? Uh, so I like the all-star festivities more than the game of a big dunk contest guy, the three point contest and skills. Um, I still watched the game just to see what was going to happen. Um, and I mean, it, it was what it is every year. It's just no defense, all offense. The first quarter was fun. I thought, you know, guys were trying to get Zion alley-oops left and right. He kept missing the dunks. Uh, we got to see JB and um, Tatum go head to head, you know, Tatum slapping the floor on uh, JB. But um, I mean, it's no defense. It's just wide open. I thought it was at least fun to watch for the first like half. And then I turned it off after the half. But I mean, I think they need to start changing it again. I like the teams. I like the draft concept, but I think they need to figure something out that it's either I don't, you can't really incentivize guys to play defense, but I think they need to make it a little bit more competitive somehow. Now, I hate to be negative. I hate the All Star Game. Ah, uh, dude, you're going, that's what about the positive, the positivity sandwich? You're just going. Let me, let, all right, you know what? You know what? You're right. Let's go into a negative comment. I need to start with a positive. Positive, one of the best three point shooting contests I've ever seen. Thank you. Okay, now it you rivals. Can... It rivals Ooh. the Larry Bird and. And you know how much that takes me to say, because Larry Bird is... It was a really good three-point contest, honestly. Steph was an animal. He... and <laughs> But the, the 32, I think, in the first round, mm-hmm. just shreds it. And then second round, he has to make the last shot and to, to win it. Just like... It, that was the most entertaining part of the whole night. And the second one... I'll, I'll, no, I'll say that for the end. Um, with the three point contest, you, I you got to shout out JBJ uh, and JBJ Jalen Brown getting some contact on the rack there. <laughs> the ball rack. He's getting fouled threes. I like it, um, but no, I I completely agree. the The game is just like it's stupid to watch. They've done things really to kind of make it a little more entertaining. Like you said, the draft. I like the concept of like you play to a certain number of points. See, I think they should. I think each quarter should be a game to twenty one or twenty four or twenty five. So, like, yeah, I would be fine with I them would, playing to twenty five or thirty. I would points. completely get rid of the game clock 
he could run a shot clock. I would get rid of the game clock so these guys aren't playing full quarters. And the second, so the second a team hits 25, second quarter. You know, another 25, second quarter. Another 25, yeah. third quarter. Another 25, game over. That's it. Right. And, it, like, you could even have the game clock going, like, as a scary thing. Like, if you don't score, which it isn't going to happen, but if, say, they don't score 30 points in, like, 10 minutes then or 12 minutes, then, the, then it's over. The quarter's over. I mean, I think they, the over. they had what? I can't even remember how many they had. They had close. I mean, they to, score 170 in the game. I think they like had 70 by halftime. So I, th- I would like it better if they just limited the quarters to points instead of, a, instead of an actual clock because then the game's over in like a half an hour. Then you don't right. have to worry about guys. You don't have to worry about guys. You know, playing too many minutes in it. It's a fast game. And then if they want to do the dunk contest at halftime from now on, it gives the dunk contest a little bit more time. That dunk contest was terrible. That was pretty bad. It was awful. That was everything bad. about this All Star Weekend was that's, pretty bad. That's gonna be minus the three point That's contest. my that's my slab of negative. Is I'm a big I'm a huge dunk contest you, guy, you and that was a dunk contest guy. That was a letdown, man. That was that was bad. Um, the other positive I like to throw out there because you know we like a positivity sandwich. The skills competition is now becoming more and more one of my favorite competitions. Of See, the, I like it, but I did they have a bounce pass part at one point, or has it always been just the? It's always been the chess. See, as think, far as I know, I think they should add a bounce pass part because I feel like at least last night they were breezing through it. I feel like in the like past years, like a couple guys have struggled. I felt like everyone was just fucking on. I think also, like, part of it is they had to move through it. They had to get right. through the three-point contest and the skills competition in an hour. Oh, that's a good point. Usually, so I wonder if it just felt faster. I, I think they just kept it moving. Like, normally they do a round, stop, go to a commercial, do another round, stop, go to a commercial, and then... Yeah, I was going to say, Sabonis was like, he would sit down and then immediately like, get back up and be like, all right, let's go. They right. Gave Paul, it, they gave Paul and someone else buys. What was that? I didn't understand that. They gave Paul and Luca a bye. Yeah, what was that? Maybe so I, they win. Were they in the finals last year? I don't know. Uh, no, Tatum won last year on that freaking half-court shot on I thought Trey that was Young. two years ago. Was that last year? I thought or it was two last years year. Ago. That could be wrong. Two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Oh, I'm it could this. be last year. I don't know. Uh, keep going. I want to look it up. Fact check. Fact check. Um, I love how the bigs rule that competition. Like that's Honestly. like I think the most entertaining part of it is like all the guards stink and like Sabonis, Vuvicic, possible new Celtics player coming soon. Um, they like all the bigs just nail it. It's it's so entertaining. Um, who was it a couple of years ago? It was another big. Um, I think Boogie did it once and he did really well. Cat, Cat, I think won it. Didn't Carl Anthony Towns win it one year? Skills competition. Uh, um, but I just really enjoy it. Are you, are you looking at it? It up? was 2019. You're right. 2019. 2019 was last year. 2019 was a half court shot. I think Sabonis won it last year over Tatum. Mm, no, no, no. Mm. Oh my God! We are just asleep at oh my the goodness. wheel. 2020 Skills Challenge 2020. Who won this? Who won this? Who won this? It was Bam Adebayo. I love how the bigs just run it. Like, the, like, and you have to hit a three at the end. Like, that makes it more entertaining. Like, the bigs are shooting three. They should do a three point competition with all bigs. That's all they should. Oh do. my God! Dude, how entertaining would that be? That would be good, honestly. That would just have good. a big uh, guards division because Steph's going to win it regardless. But like, imagine, nah, like, dude, I, Conley, I Conley had every chance at winning that. I it wasn't a given. It wasn't a given. That's the thing. I know. Well, I know. I know. Steph was shooting like his mind was on another level, but Conley was damn close to taking that man. He was a shot away. God, was shot away. I was pulling for him so I was pulling hard, for him too because everyone crapped. So like, hard. I, I hated the LeBron comment that he said, like, uh, we didn't grow up picking the Jazz in 2K, so I'm not going to pick any Jazz players. First of all, his coach was the Jazz coach. <laughs> and the second, Rudy Gobert on his team. So it's like, I, I just hate it. So I was rooting for Michael Conley too, and especially because he just got thrown in last minute. It would have been so funny for him to win. Uh, Jason Tatum looked like he wanted no part of it in the finals. 
Like he when he saw Steph shoot thirty one or thirty two, he like totally crushed his pants. And Jalen Brown was awful. He was just A B was not good, man. It wasn't good. He was scared too. There, I mean, uh, you know, it is. You know, you, I don't know. It is what it is. I, I, you know, guys, just you get cold. You get cold. It wasn't even cold. He was just bad. It wasn't like it wasn't cold. But happy for him that he made his first All Star game. That was that was nice. It was nice to see. You're right. It was kind of a cool experience seeing Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum play. Uh, against each other. They did other. well, too. They, did, they well. did pretty well. The thing I don't like is that Jalen Brown complained about how his body was banged up last week, and he played the mo- one of the most amount of minutes. Out That's of what I'm saying, dude. If you game. limit it to points, get these guys out of there even faster. Like, like I, I was kind of... Kemba play a bunch of minutes last year, and then all yeah, and he got hurt, knee, and then his knee acted. He up. messed yeah. up his knee, and then that was it for the rest of. Now he's. Some would argue that he hasn't been the same till recently. So like that's why that's why I hate this event. Like I I like I get the All Star game, I get it, but like notice LeBron. LeBron was the captain. He every did his little show dance in the first quarter. He played thirteen, minutes, I think, in the game. But like thirteen minutes, he just came in and did his thing, and then he was like, "All right, I'm out." So and let the young guys play. It's like I I think Jalen Brown. I, I wish he only played like sixteen minutes in the game. Because especially if you like, I, I people were saying he shouldn't play. I didn't think that. No, but play. if he, it's his first game. Like I will, I want to see him play in this game. But the fact that he played that much is pretty. I think he played twenty eight point, twenty eight minutes in that game, which is pretty disgusting. Saying his body, he said his body <laughs> hasn't been the same all year. Like he's he's he hasn't played healthy all year. So and you're playing twenty eight minutes in a game that means nothing. It's like, it, it's ridiculous. But I hope they make some kind of adjustment to it because it's just boring. Like the game, I watched the first quarter and that was it. And obviously I watched some of the slam dunk contest, but I, I got bored halfway you, through that. How would you fix the dunk contest? How would you, yeah, how would, how would you do it? I have some ideas. My only problem is um, that I feel like last night was, I felt like last night was bad just because there was three guys and it was halftime. Like usually yeah. they get their own, usually they get their time and they have more people. So I don't want to. I don't want to. I mean, a lot of people were. That's true. It was. It was. It was a condensed time. A lot, like of, they, they a lot have, of people were burying it and saying it's, the dunk contest is dead. The dunk contest is dead. People forget Levine and Gordon were. That was only a couple of years ago, man. Let's not forget. That was one of the greatest dunk. It's contests not like it's seen. not like it's been a ten year run of bad dunk contests. There have been some yeah, I, I mean, there yeah, some, you got to chalk it been, up. Like there have been there have been some stinkers, but there have been some good ones. I think I think this proves that you shouldn't do it at halftime. I think you need the All Star Saturday. Yeah, like I, yeah. I, I understand all, what they I were like doing. The events, I like having all the events one night and then the game the next. Yeah. But you have more time to do everything. Right. And you couldn't and you couldn't um, do it this year, but right. I get I get it. Um, yeah, I mean the way to fix it is like I maybe would have more try to get more known players like it's like the like you say who to everyone that competed in the dunk contest last the other night yeah and that's Obi, part of it Obi Toppin was the big favorite and he was yeah impressive. and he's a rookie that's been do, like he was a favorite in mine I wrote down Celtics should draft Obi Toppin but he's literally did nothing for the Knicks see I don't uh, I don't mind if it's younger guys because I feel like it's a good chip on your shoulder if you win it like Zach Levine like that made Zach Levine I don't mind if right. it's younger guys, but you do need like established guys to also like bring in people being like, oh, so and so is doing it. Oh shit. All right, let's watch this. Yeah, if you look at the like the Zach Levine years, like, yeah, he kind of made his name off of it, but yeah. you also had like established guys. Like I think Dwight Howard might have been in one year. Yeah, Dwight came back uh, for one. And even when Dwight was doing it, like Nate Robinson made a goddamn career off the dunk contest. Right. But you had those like you had those big name guys. Right. I think Jalen Brown's kind of meant for the dunk contest, but I, I, I thought he was, why I've he always thought he was going to do it. I've always thought he was going to do it. He probably will do it in the future, but yeah, I, I'd like to see him do it. I would say I'd ja, like to see, I would, fin- I would like to see Ja Morant do it, but I know he hurt his ankle early in the year. So I don't know if he just didn't want to try it, but yeah. And what would be your top? How many is it? Four? Is it four? Is it four or six? Normally, uh, they've always changed it around. I think one year so they did. Like, who? One year they did like teams, which was a shit show. But yeah, I don't like that. If you had to pick four right now in the NBA, what would you be your four? 
My four dunk contest co- participants? Yeah. Jaw, if you could have anyone in the NBA right now. I would do Jaw, Zion, um, Brown, and Zach Levine. Yeah. I would like – I would do – I would do Zion, Jalen, LeBron, and Zach Levine slash Aaron Gordon. I want Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon will never do he'll it never, again. But he'll never I, do it again. They fucked him. I want to see a re. I want to see a rematch again. I want to see the. I want to see World if War Three. He just deserves give, it. If they had just given him one of those couple he 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 could be doing it for the rest of his goddamn career if they just gave him one but they kept screwing him in. He, they should have given him the deserved like his dunks were bad they need to adjust that rule too like they can't I, just keep going dude i off. hate the judges i think it should just they need to go back to fan voting they need to go back to van, fan voting have the fans have the fans vote for it get i can't stand with dominic wilkins and Dwayne wade or just paul ticking around to make sure guys win and lose i can't do it anymore Say what you want, but Shaq's pretty consistent. Yeah, Shaq's Shaq consistent. says if you and then Kenny Smith every single dunk. That's a fifty. That's a fifty. Yeah, that's a that's fifty. A, drives me nuts. God damn it, Shaq. Well, Shaq's consistent though. He yeah, says, "Oh yeah, Shaq's If consistent. you miss the dunk, if you miss the dunk, you miss points. That, no matter how good it is, and he'll call out a dunk if it's easy or if it's like an in-game dunk. Like some, I, th- I can't remember. Yeah. What it was. I think it was Top, and he did like a basic dunk, and Shaq's like, "That's an in-game dunk. That's easy." But um, you, if, if you want my hot take to fix the dunk contest, what is it? The NBA should secretly lower the rim to 10 feet, and then those guys can do some crazy shit on a 10-foot It rim. is 10 feet. Or another two feet, sorry. So eight feet? You want an eight-foot rim? Lower, lower, maybe not two feet, but like lower the rim so that those guys can do it. Like, I know um, Simmons did like the – he went up and got the ball off the – backboard and dunked it imagine what they can do if it's a lower rim man no i don't like that lower the rim do I, it yeah you know what I liked was when dwight howard raised the rim he raised it another like foot a foot and a half remember that like back in the height of dwight howard dunk contest years he did like a double like 12 foot rim dunk I do. That yeah, yeah. Ele- that I'm was thinking, one of the best. but if you raise it then freaking guys like simmons aren't gonna be able to kiss the rim I no, think, like I think it's up to the person. I think, I think it if should you, be up to. I them. think if you lower it, these guys will be doing some real crazy shit. I don't know. I like. I like the. I. I know you're doing going with it, but I like. I like it. I don't think they should lower it. I think they that should lower it for down. every single NBA game. How about that, Big Red? Just lower the rim. Lower the rim. I wish they did that when I was in. When I played basketball, I wish they did lower <laughs> the rim. I could have been dunking when I was when I was in high school. Uh, be all those uh, Fisher Price rims. <laughs> um, like the most, one of the most controversial and entertaining parts of the All Star Game was that the news that broke out right before that Blake Griffin was signing with the Nets. What do you, what is your uh, reaction to that? I, I I think it's like the rich get richer, but. Uh, I mean, it's definitely It'll be rich, interesting to see how he fits. It's definitely rich get richer. It's a team getting another like all star pl- player, but I mean, this isn't this isn't dunk contest. Blake Griffin. This is twenty twenty one. Blake Griffin. I mean, this guy. They were calling it a four headed monster on the broadcast last night, dude. I don't think this changes much. I think it's just another. It's just another guy at this point. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't fear the Nets any more than I did yesterday. Think about it. Now he's the fourth star on the team, right? He's definitely the fourth. I think that just opens him up even more. Like, I think he's just going to, instead of being the guy that's going to be like the main guy, now he's like, he's not expected to do as much. And I think he's going to exceed I expectations. I don't think, I think he's, he's going to do, do much, good. especially with Durant, KD, Durant, KD, Durant, Harden, and the Kyrie dude. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he's going to sniff. I heard he's coming off the bench. Exactly. I don't think he's going to sniff what he once was. So I don't know why people are expecting prime Griffin. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to help them out a lot, but it makes me think like it's another mouth to feed. I don't think it's going to help them. You know what it makes me think of? It's like, we talked about so much how Danny fleeced the nets just a few years ago. And I think we both agree that they're in like prime position to make the finals. 
Like we fleeced them. We always said we fleeced them. They went through a total like in the cellar time now back to a championship caliber team. It drives me nuts. It really does. Like I, I, I yeah, really... but they, they, they only rebuilt because for some reason, I don't know why, Durant and Kyrie wanted to play together in Brooklyn. It, the Nets didn't do anything. They just happened to play in the New York area. That's the only reason. They didn't trade no. for any. They didn't trade for people that made them better. They didn't draft anyone that made them better. They just happened to play in the. New they York. had some pieces that made them want to come. But there. It, no, part no, of it was no, because no, of the no. New York area. But they had pieces. It was one hundred percent the New York area. Kevin Durant wasn't coming to Brooklyn with Kyrie because Jared Dudley was on the the Nets. No, not Jared Dudley, but they had like <laughs> they had Jared Allen. La, oh, uh, Levert, and they shipped him out. Levert. They had. Um, um, is gone. D'Angelo Russell's gone. Harris gone. They, well, they had D'Angelo oh, Russell, but they got gone. rid of him because they got they were getting Kyrie. And exactly. They so they didn't even keep their guy. So then, if you got a chance to uh, change between that's what I'm you, saying. They didn't do anything. They just happened to be in New York. I don't know. I think I they. But part of that is you got they, pieces. They stumbled into Kyrie and Durant. That's all they did. They yeah, it still can drive you nuts. Like they, they. Oh, I'm not happy about it, but it's not like. I mean, if freaking LeBron, if LeBron James came to Boston when he was a free agent, what did we do to get LeBron? You know, he decided to sign here. Not nothing we did to the Brooklyn Nets made LeBron come here. Huh? What does that have to do with the Brooklyn Nets? The trade. I'm. I'm saying nothing we did made him come here. Nothing the oh. Nets did made Durant and I, Kyrie go there. Yeah, I just think they wanted to play in New York. They just happened to sign And two, they had some good pieces on the bench, too. They happened to sign two huge free agents. The Celtics could have easily done that with Durant or LeBron. But why didn't we? Because we're Boston, Massachusetts. No one wants to play here. <laughs> Unless your I name's Al Horford. <laughs> I'd take Al back. Uh, I, I just don't get it. Like, and it's, it's weird because you're right. Uh, people... But free agent, we got a bunch of big names in a row. Not got, as big as, not as big as Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. No, Kevin Durant. Well, we did get Kyrie Irving, in but a trade, Kevin, in a trade, he didn't but he just, wanted to come here. No, he didn't want to come here. No, he didn't. He would have resigned if he wanted to be here. I think no. I think I think he's. He I, lied to your freaking face that he, he was going to sign here. He did lie to my face, but I don't think it was that when he got traded here. I think he wanted to come to Boston. I don't yeah, think it was I like mean, I don't want to go here. And then he was like, "Oh, I'm going to play here." And oh uh, yeah, I want to resign here. And but I was lying. I think it happened. It was a deteriorating relationship over the once over one season. Over because he didn't think that. Did we think that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown were going to be stars? The yes, first they they made themselves stars no, in the they made themselves stars in the postseason. He didn't play in. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying Kyrie Irving came Jalen Brown's rookie year. Did you think when we drafted J- he was the uh, number three pick? But you thought he was going to be a all like a, he wasn't an all star. But you thought he was going to be the production that he did. Tatum was here. For that, that was Tatum's rookie year, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Did you think him his rookie year he's going to do what he did? He wouldn't have if um, everyone was healthy. Right. If, there if, was if, no if, chance. If, if Hayward doesn't get hurt now. Right. So I think if Hayward doesn't get hurt, it's a totally different situation. It, it's like you have Kyrie. You have a team led by Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward and Al Hor- technically Al Horford. Those were the three best players you thought going into the season. Then after everyone got hurt. The young guys became the best players, and they got that. That's what happened. That's that's. You that's think Kyrie? Do you think Kyrie's still playing in Boston if Hayward doesn't get hurt? Yes. Okay. I I firmly believe it because Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum wouldn't have had the responsibility that they had. To be honest with you, there's a good chance. I don't know if this is true, but there's a good chance Terry Rozier is still here next uh, uh, if that doesn't happen. Because Terry Rozier was forced to play an increased amount of time after those two got hurt. So what are well? Uh, I mean, but I don't. That doesn't really matter. Terry Rozier is not the, really the main concern. It's more <laughs> Jalen Brown and uh, Jason Tatum. But I think a lot of those guys and those it, two aren't close to what they are now. Then, if that's the case, who? who's Brown and uh, Brown and Tatum? They're not all stars if Hayward and right. Uh, no, Tatum. no. I it's a double edged sword. Like I totally agree. They're not at the level they're at now if that no. doesn't happen. But you also have. An all you you have two all you have technically three but you have two all stars 
of Gordon Hayward and uh, Kyrie Irving playing at the top level also with this team. So, I mean, it's a double-edged sword. It could go either way. So, moving on. We'll move on. The deadline is – trade deadline is in, like, two weeks, about a little over two weeks, March 25th. Um, We're showing interest – the Celtics are showing interest in a couple guys, such as Nikola Vucevic and Grant, uh, two guys that I've heard. I mean, we've also heard the rumors of Aaron Gordon, um, Harrison Barnes, um, Fournier, a lot of those guys. Uh, what do we think? First of all, what do we think about Nikola Vucevic and Grant? Like, I know? mean, they're they're good pieces. I'd like to have them. Um, I don't know if they're kind of like the firework pieces that people want out of Danny. I know people are kind of putting the screws to Danny over the last couple of weeks to make a big move. Um, I think they're suitable moves. I think they're moves that help the team, but I don't think they're like, you know, blockbuster changes the face of the team moves. You don't think Nikola Vucevic adds, like, he's an all-star center? I don't know if he, you know. I think that would definitely quench the thirst of a lot of Celtics fans. Do you think that makes, do you think that completely changes the team or? I think it helps them down. Like now That's you what have I'm a saying. Big, like he, a it's a good body. Piece. I, but I'm, I'm talking like people. You're at an all star, right? But I'm talking people want like Bradley Beal and people like that. That's like, just not gonna happen, right? Like, and that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, and that's what I'm saying. Like people are expecting huge deals. Like they want Bradley Beal. You're not gonna get Bradley Beal. You're gonna get guys yeah. like Grant and Nicola, which are good pieces, but they're not right. like the perennial. Like when James Harden was available, you're not getting James Harden, right? And I think those same people that are demanding Bradley Beal are the same people that said, we don't want James Harden. Right. So it's like, I think Vuvicic is like the top. I think, in, I guess you could put Grant a little, I put Grant a little below, but Vuvicic is like the top guy that you can probably get. Like that is an all-star center. He scores, he can shoot, he stretches the floor. He's big, he's bulky, put him down low. I mean, defensively, I'm not too sure. I'm like not sold on him. But, you know, he, he's a big body. Like, it's going to – you need a big body going down the uh, stretch in the, uh, in the postseason. Uh, the one thing that it does not help us with, I think we're really low. I know we talk big, big, big. I really don't know our guard depth. Like, I'm not sold on our guard depth. I really am not. Like, who's the best guard off the bench right now? I know Marcus Smart's hurt, but right now, who's Maybe. the best guard off the bench? Pritchard, we're gonna get toast if yeah, Peyton Pritchard's <laughs> your best best guard off the bench. You have Peyton Pritchard, if Carson Teague, Edwards. If Teague, Teague. Is, if Teague is playing like Teague should play, it would be him. But he's been hot and cold. Like th- this is not good. He had, a good have, he had a good game. Uh, I can't. I think it was. Uh, it might have been the. Yeah, he had one of those last four. He was pretty God, solid. Damn it! What game was it? Ah, uh, man. I wish I knew. But he was hitting bunnies at the end. He. I think it was the Clippers game. He was hitting like bunnies and he was finishing his shot so i, I really you know like was good in that clippers game our boy who should, let me who hear should, it let me say his name let's hear it robert there Williams. it is there it is stock has that, never been higher baby and now that raises the question do we even bother going after a guy like vuvic like that like i feel like we're so we don't have a star center like you say we, rob williams is playing out of his mind but we don't have a star center we have a yeah. bunch of backup centers Mm-hmm. So I get the need for Vuvicic. Like, I think he fills in, he comes in and fills the need. He's the starting center. Now you have a backup center. But now that just means you have Tristan Thompson, Tice, and Robert Williams fighting for minutes. Like, we're going to be playing three. I know they play Thompson at the four. So I guess he could still get minutes at the four a little bit for Thompson. Yeah, but um, I, I mean, yeah, I don't mind it. I wouldn't I, hate it. I, 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 trust me. I mean, I'm the first guy that'll say I want Rob Williams to be our permanent five. He's just not reliable, man. You know he's going to get hurt at some point. Yeah. And he could prove me wrong. He could prove me wrong and play every game for the rest of the season and never get hurt again. But on paper, we know he's, we, you know, he, yeah. something happens and he gets hurt and he can't play. And then he doesn't take a step back, but he, you know, he's out of the lineup. Yeah. So I would, I would still make the move from a depth perception. Maybe you use Tice as a piece in that trade. Would you use Rob Williams in the trade? I'd keep him, man. I think he's showing a lot. He's progressing a lot this season. I'd, yeah. I'd hang on to him. He's a young guy that's starting to get it. Even defensively, he's starting to get it. Defensively, yeah. I mean, 
here's part of the problem. This is why, like, and this is just looking at Nikola Vucevic. Like, we mm-hmm. can change it depending on the player. Like, if we don't trade for that kind of center, then I'm totally sold on keeping Rob Williams. Like, you, I'm like, you need to keep him. But I'm considering it with Vucevic for a couple of reasons. One, he's got a couple more years on his deal, so he's going to be your starting center. He could be your starting center for the next three years, um, at least. Rob Williams has proven he just needs minutes, and I, we've been quoted either trade him or play him. So if one they of do, the two. if they do bring in Nicola, and are you hypothetically getting rid of Tice in that scenario? You got to get rid of one. My point is, you got to get rid of one of them. Right. So if it, all right, say, and I don't think. Sorry, and if, I don't. I'll let you say it. I don't think Tice gets it done. I think Rob. No, Williams no, no. Gets there's, there's no. You think so? Huh. Well, I wonder, like, I not just it, Rob Williams, but I think right, right, Rob right. Williams makes it, sweetens the pot a I little think bit. if you put Tice with the right piece, you can maybe make it happen. But I, I'm saying if Danny Ainge had a trade come across his desk where Daniel Tice was involved and it was for Nicola, and he said, um, what, what do you think? I would still, I would take the trade, you know, being a Rob Williams guy, I take the trade. You have Nicola, who's a, a certified five. He's your solid five. And then even if you know, Rob is in your center of the future. You, that's a trade piece. That's another trade piece right there. His stock so, has never been higher. So what would you trade for Nikola Vucevic? What would be your trade? Ah, uh, man, I, I'd have to look. Are you even sold honestly. on him? Are you a guy? Are you a, I'd take him. I'd take him. He's, I mean, I'm not a huge Tice guy, so I'd yeah. take him. I'm a Rob Williams guy, but again, his health is a concern. Yeah. If, if Rob Williams was a reliable, I don't get hurt at all or often guy, I'd be demanding he be starting right now. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. Like, a guy with, like, um, Vuvicic, um, I'm ready to go all close to all in. I'm ready to trade, like, two to three first-round picks, wow. two first-round picks, and then maybe one or two of the guys that we drafted the last couple of years. To get so it done, he's gonna two, he's gonna require a lot to get two him. first and yep. like a Grant and someone else. Like I, I would do like a Romeo Langford and I don't know a Carson I don't or know if, a I don't know if uh, Edwards is getting you much or sorry Langford is getting you much. Um, um, it really I mean if they move Rome, Gordon, if they move Gordon they're definitely gonna move him. Uh, let me see his contract. Who Vuvic? Yeah, I yeah, I think it's he's got a couple more years on. It's either he's two on, or three more deal years he's left. Four. He's on a four year, one hundred million dollar contract. He's in the second year of it. Yeah, so he's got two more years. So he's gonna be so, oh, he's gonna be owed. Yeah, about fifty grand, fifty grand, fifty million. But that's that's why it's gonna be harder to get him is because he's he has two more years on his deal. He has years that Orlando can control him mm-hmm. his contract like. If he was a one year left or like this is going into free agency, I think it would be easy to get him. But the fact that he's got two years of control plus this year, it's like, I don't know. It's also interesting to hear the teams that are interested in him. The Heat, the, the, I heard the, um, the Spurs, the Hornets, like those are the teams that are interested in him. And you would think like a playoff team, a more established playoff team would be interested in him. But, um, oh, we have the but, trade exemption though. I keep that's what I'm saying. You have the trade exemption, and you throw a bunch of young guys and picks at them, and you're going to get them. I think you can get them. Let me see what works here. I'm on the trade machine. What did you say, Romeo Langford? Romeo Langford. Anyone else? Throw Grant? in a young, throw in a young guy. You can throw Grant in if it gets it done, and like two first, two to three first round picks. They don't let me do picks on here. I don't think. Um. Yeah, you can't use picks. Damn. But that would be like the main point. Like that's our main that's all we got. Like what do you have to trade? You have no trade value. That's what I'm saying. So uh, it's like all you got young guys. I'm sick of having a, we can't have a bench of young guys. We need to start piling up and start to go after these like veteran guys. Here's damn, a, here, it's going to be hard, man. Here's another one at you. He's still available, Boogie. Boogie's still available. Like, do you go? Do you make a trade for a I'm guy like? I'm surprised he's not on the Nets already. To be honest, I'm surprised he didn't sign with the Lakers or the Nets already, uh, or the Clippers. Uh, 
do you go sign Boogie and then make that same kind of trade I was talking about for like a Grant or a Harrison Barnes type? I take Harrison Barnes. Um, I don't, does do you think Boogie's better than what you have for options right now? Uh, I think he adds. I think he adds a little scoring. I think he uh, like you could have him off the bench. I think he brings a little veteran presence. It would, it would definitely be depth. Yeah, I guess. and it's a veteran presence. Like you look at the bench, you have no veteran presence in that locker. Yeah, and, uh, Tristan Thompson's really your only vet outside so, of Teague. Uh, so like I wouldn't mind a boogie coming in. You bring in Harrison Barnes that way with the trade. Um, or a guy like that, like he's a championship caliber team. He's been on a championship team. Like I'd take it. I'd take a trade for Rondo too. Like I've talked about it before. Um, but regardless, we got to make a move for something like, um, we got to do something to get, to get some veteran guys in here and get some star power in here. And you're not going to get a superstar. You're going to get like an all-star, try to get an all-star level player in here. So uh, it'll be interesting to see moving forward. We still got time, uh, but two weeks away, uh, we're going to talk a lot of March Madness next week. So I don't know how much NBA we're going to get. Oh, but... dude. Speaking of March Madness, I meant to say this at the top. My UMass Little Riverhawks, one win away from making it to the dance for the first time in school history. Oh my goodness gracious. We play let's, the Hart- Let's go. We play, we play the heart, the, uh, Hartford Hawks this Saturday at 11 AM. If we win that game, we're in baby. All I'm going to say is Kevin didn't mention about River Hawk basketball. Oh, he brought up that natty. He's and great. All of a sudden, now they're winning. Brought up that natty, and then all of a sudden, we knock up. We dude, we beat UMBC, the King Slayers. We did I th- it. I think. I I hope this is the year. I, is I, if if we do a bracket, are you going to make them win the whole tournament? They're definitely getting at least the first round. <laughs> they're definitely getting a first round win at least. I'll do that too. They're going to get bad. matched up with like freaking Gonzaga or something like that. I'm like, all right, let's roll, baby. They're gonna they're gonna be one of those big upset teams. Uh, all right, moving on. Before we move completely out of uh, basketball, we didn't do it last week, so I feel like we have to do it this week. Let's get to picks of the week. Picks of the week. All right, picks of the week. I'm making a little bit of a comeback here. Two weeks ago, I got my first win of the NBA season. Uh, Danny Football took a took a I loss by one by so, one. So uh, Danny Football, who you got? There's only two games. Yeah, we only had two options. Yeah, much to pick from. So I'm gonna go Grizz over Wiz. Um, Grizz over Wiz. I like the Grizzlies, dude. I like what they're doing down there, and um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good game. The Wizards have kind of picked it up, picked it up a little bit over the last couple of games. So I like I think there's gonna be a good showcase between Beal and Morant. So I'm gonna take the Grizzlies. Yeah, the uh, the Wizards were one of the hottest teams in the NBA going into the All Star break. Uh, I'm going with the other game. I'm going Spurs over Mavs. Um, I want to. I mean, it's two crap teams, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trusting the Spurs. I love the Spurs. Hopefully, they get a nice little dub over there. Uh, coming off a nicely rested. Uh, week off because we know none of them were making the all-star game. <laughs> uh, so let's see if we can get that right. Uh, before we move on, how bad was Luca in the skills challenge? He looked oh terrible, God, dude. He didn't want to be there to be honest. Yeah. He looked like he wanted to just get to the game. He so didn't give a shit. Uh, moving on to Red Sox. Now this is something Danny football feels pretty good about. He, he was telling me going in the show, he was very excited about the, your Boston here's, Red Sox. Here's a good help and positivity. I mean, Spring training counts if you're doing well. Spring training, spring training means nothing if you're doing poorly. And boy, are we doing well. I'm liking this team so far, Big Red. Yeah. I mean, the record doesn't show it, but I, you can't trust it because, like, you know, we take all our guys out halfway through the game anyway, so I don't really trust record-wise. But what, looking at it, like the numbers, Bobby D, my guy, he was my pick going into the offseason, going into the season, Bobby Dahlback. Folks, circle him on your calendar. Raking, he's, dude. Raking. He's your first baseman of the future. He's going to just hit nothing but dingers, and he's going to be a nice place on the, uh, on the corner. Um, Duran is, uh, being su- is surprisingly really doing better than I even thought, uh, and he's going to help with the depleted outfield. Ice Horse, you know, he's doing big things with the bat, and Kiki is showing pretty good stuff uh, the first couple weeks of offseason. 
They look good, dude. They look good. People forget there was a couple years ago we went winless in spring training and we didn't do good. So, you know, <laughs> win these spring training games, get the camaraderie going, get, you know, let, get that winning feeling, and maybe we turn this into wins in the regular season. Who knows? You know what it is? Hmm? It's our guy back at the helm. It is, dude. It's AC, man. It's a, it's a fresh feeling. back and he's hungry. 2019, yeah. he wasn't hungry. He's hungry now. Yeah, he's checked. He, he wants to win. To prove. He wants to win. He wants to win bad. Um, the one thing I'm nervous about is pitching, man. Pitching, pitching's got to. I mean, we've seen some good performances out of some of the guys, but um, that one kid got bailed out by the mercy rule. That was crazy. Which one was that? Which kid was it? I can't. Ah, oh, man, I re- wish I remember what game it was. Was it? But they limit the pitches per inning, and he like walked. He like got the bases loaded, but he had he had thrown so many pitches that they just called the inning. Oh, Can't really? It was. Well, I'll find it, but you can um, keep going. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, so pitching, I really want to see that kind of tighten up a little bit. During this little break uh, in the action, I want to say give our best regards from the Big Red Zone to our friends of the show, Zach Short and Jake Fishman, former guests on the show. Zach Short, is um, he got traded last year. Right after, actually, he was on the show. A couple weeks later, he got traded to the Detroit Tigers. And uh, he's in spring training there. He's on the 40 man. And hopefully we're fingers crossed and he makes the big league club uh, going into the season. And Jake Fishman's a non, uh, he is just invited to come to spring training. He's not on the active roster, but he's there and hopefully doing big things. He got, he's with the Miami Marlins now. So uh, good luck to both those guys and uh, doing big things in spring training. It was uh, it was Garrett Richard about a week yeah, ago. I told you this guy stinks. Like that's what we. I mean, signed hey, him. I mean, if we're gonna have rules that help you get out of the inning, I mean, he did pretty well <laughs> considering he threw twenty, two through twenty three pitches. He got out of a bases loaded, uh, bases loaded jam. Yeah, because the because spring training wants to keep the games moving. That's not gonna happen in the regular season. I never said he was good, but I mean, yeah. it, it happened. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. That's the one downfall, but. Positivity sandwich here. Erod looked phenomenal so far. I like I like what I see from uh, Erod. Um, another sad, sad but you know, end of an era kind of bittersweet news. JBJ signed with the Brewers. Uh, and end of the era, Danny football. Official end of the dance. Win repeat. The out, the win dance repeat. Gone, man. The boys are gone. The boys are gone. The but um, bees are gone. I think it's time. It's a new era. We got uh, a new outfield, the young Durant, outfield Verdugo. out there. Verdugo and whoever else wants to play center field. Um, well, probably uh, I'm thinking uh, Verdugo may play a little bit. I thought bit they were going to move him to center field. I thought they yeah. had him listed at center field at one point. Who? I thought they had Verdugo listed at center field. Yeah, I think, he, I think he's at center field now. Um, Duran and I forget who they have playing left, but... Uh, and Eminera hopefully he does big things. I love JBJ, big JBJ defender. Um, but hopefully he does big things in the Brewers. Um, and it, who's the, who's one thing that you're looking, uh, you're watching closely? I'm Dave liking Hogan. Duran, dude. He looks solid so far. That's the, that's yeah. and like you said, that's gonna be the guy. Like they you need, need him. To keep, to do you well. need to keep an eye on him, and you need him to keep progressing because if he can be your Solid middle of the lineup guy. That's that's dangerous. Yeah, my mind. I'm also or, I'm sticking. Oh, Cordero is the uh, left fielder. Cordero. Okay. Um, the other guy I'm going with is Bobby D. Like I'm going to stick with uh, stick on the Bobby D train. Like you need this guy to play well. He's he's got to be your starting first baseman. He's got to you know he's going to be your power guy. He's going to get you some pop in the middle middle to end of the lineup. So I hope he has a big year. We have these kids coming up, man. We I know yeah. people have been ragging on our farm system, but we have we're getting these. We guys have some going. pieces, dude. We're we getting have some these guys going. In there. We're getting these guys going. Uh, no pitching, but we're getting. These no, guys going. We have zero arms whatsoever, but boy, you know can what? We, can we scout batters? Yeah, boy, can we have an outfield? I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but a uh, quick, quick little baseball segment. Uh, but um. Good things on the horizon there for the uh, for the Boston Red Sox. Uh, moving on to the NFL, free agency starts in two weeks, uh, and we had a big signing. Someone cue the horn. A the big alarm. shot across the bow, right in Big Red's 
Hot takes, man. Dak Prescott signs with the monster deal with um with the Cowboys. I think it was what was it a five? It was one of the richest deals, and makes him one of the most highest paid players next year. Um, which well deserved, I might add. Some people are giving him crap. Well deserved. This guy is a stud. Um. But I, I, Big Red is a little disappointed because that outside chance that, you know, I always had when I went to bed at night was like, man, the Patriots could go out tomorrow and sign Dak Prescott. And that's not happening. So another dream killed by Bill Belichick, which is nice. Oh, but, my God. Uh, no, I didn't think we were getting Dak Prescott. Anyway. I mean, it was definitely an outside chance, but now it's just the door's completely shut. And especially the deal he got, I didn't think he was going to get that much money coming off of that devastating injury. So... Um, good for him though. Yeah, go um, figure uh, that the Cowboys pay him now and not when he was healthy. Yeah, because Jerry Jones is a moron. <laughs> um, so now I got to find another quarterback that I can hope to come <laughs> to the Patriots. So uh, we're he's right there in at, Dallas, dude. Andy Dalton's right there. Come on, Andy, <laughs> Andy Dalton. He's staying in Dallas. I think they're going to hold on to him. Um, and we didn't get to talk about it last week, but Russell Wilson said that. He gave his teams that he wants to play for, Danny Football. Trouble in paradise, man. Uh, and seeing how one of them is the Cowboys, we can cross that cross one off, off the list. Uh, we got the Bears, Saints, and Raiders left. Uh, I don't think he would go to the Raiders, so that leaves the Bears and the Saints. Uh, and all the Saints just depends on if they got that uh, juggernaut of a contract called Drew Brees down there. So... Uh, what do you think? Do you think a, he would... It's a really odd list of teams. Um, hey, pick three the, crap like, teams. Like you said, the Cowboys are out. The Raiders are going to have a need for a quarterback. The Saints, if Breeze is really gone, will have a need for a quarterback. And then the Bears, I mean, Foles and Trubisky just aren't working out, so they do right. need a quarterback. I don't know if... Anything outside of the Saints gives him the best chance to win a Super Bowl. So if he's chasing money, I get it. If he's chasing Super Bowls, New Orleans is the only team on that list that makes sense. But it's not like he's chasing money because he's he's locked into his contract. So where does he want to well, go? That's what I'm. Well, I think you know the Bears. The Bears will pay him whatever the hell they need to pay him when when once he needs to get paid. Right. I think it's more he wants to say in who comes to the team. I think that's more what it is. He wants to say, like, I want this guy to come to the I want you to go get this guy. I want you to go get this guy plus win. Like, I think that's... Do these teams have a bunch of cap space? Do the Bears and Raiders have cap space that I don't know about? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I don't guys... get this list. I just don't. The Saints definitely don't. The Saints have The Saints zero definitely cap. don't, but they have a good team. They just cut. They have a very good team. They just cut uh, Jared Cook to create some cap space. Um, the only one I can see him going to is the Bears out of that list. And uh, even with the Cowboys, I was like, there's zero shot the Cowboys are going to get the Bears it. are a good, they're a good team, but they're not like Saints good. No, but they have a decent defense. They have a younger, I think they have still have that young coach. They have a, they have one of the best defensive players in the league with Khalil Mack. If they can sign, re-sign Allen Robinson, that's like a good wide receiver for him. They're not going to on Allen Robinson. We're going to get him, right, guys? Come on. That's right. I, I hope you're right. That's why he should just come to New England. Russ, just come to New England. Uh, I like these guys that are saying, like, I know I'm skipping around a little bit, but they were talking about a lot of trade trade news coming out uh, the last 24 hours about Stephon Gilmore trying to trade Stephon Gilmore. And they're like, who should we trade Stephon Gilmore for? And someone put OBJ. Why? Why are we going to trade for back, let's, uh, OBJ? Let's figure the quarterback out first, my, rat, my man. Come on. Yeah, like, what are we going to do? It's going to be like he was in uh, when he was with the Giants. He had no one throwing to him. Let's, let's figure out who's throwing the ball before we figure out who's catching him. Yeah, let's, let's relax. I'm totally fine with trading uh, Stephon Gilmore, and he's the guy that I actually said, if we can make a deal for Deshaun Watson, put him in the deal, because I think it's going to sweeten the pot to get him. Like, I think they wanted two defensive starters. Give them Gilmore. And yeah, it's then plus someone the else. Watson trade rumors have kind of died down. It's a game of chicken. It's like we talked about. Like, he said, I don't want to be there. They're saying, well, we want you here. So who's going to blink first? I think, I think eventually Washington's going to blink and they're going to trade him away. But it's interesting to see. Like, I don't know where he's going, to be honest with you. I've heard 
so many different scenarios that could happen. I heard he goes to the Miami and Tua goes to uh, Tua goes to Houston in the trade, the Houston. I heard the same situation, but the Patriots flipped the 15th pick for Tua after that trade. Oh, I've heard, my God. I've heard that they trade uh, Donald and picks for Deshaun Watson. I've heard him going to everywhere. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen. I like, I really don't. I, I, and he very likely could be playing in Houston or sitting out in Houston. This is why I'm excited for the draft, man. This is where everything's going to start shaking out. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's, I, I can't wait for free agency because that's going to be telling. Like, we're going to see where people start going. If the Patriots go out and sign, uh, like a guy like Ryan Fitzpatrick, who said he may be retiring. Oh my God. But if they go out and sign Ryan Fitzpatrick day one, then you kind of have a better idea. Like, all right, then we're probably going through the draft. We're building, we're not trading for Deshaun Watson. We're probably going to go get, you know, draft someone in the first or second round at quarterback and then have Fitzpatrick be the interim starter. That's probably what's going to happen. Or if they go out and make a blockbuster deal to get Deshaun Watson or someone like a starting quarterback, then like, all right, now we're going to start, like, you know, we're going to sign some wide receivers, maybe retool through the rounds. It, it really is. Like, I can't wait to see what happens when free agency opens. Um, another guy that's signing is J.J. Watt, signed with the Cardinals. Let me repeat that. The Cardinals. Didn't like see that Cardinals, coming. Dude, I like this Cardinals team. I love the signing. Didn't see it coming. I really didn't think the this Cardinals huge, would play man. there. Got D Hop uh, and Kyler on one side, and now you have Chandler Jones and JJ on the other. This is a, a scary good pass team. rush. Russell Wilson has to face Aaron Donald and these two now twice a twice a season. That's why he wants to get out of there. He doesn't want to face those guys. Uh, so it, I I didn't think the Patriots towards the end. I didn't think the Patriots are going to sign him anyway. But I thought I thought there was a chance he was going to the Steelers. I thought there was a chance he was going to go. Yeah, people were talking uh, about the Steelers was like it was a formality. Yeah, I, I, was, I was pretty surprised. Uh, another guy, uh, cuts-wise, uh, well, let's go, let's go with some positive. Uh, Hightower, Chung, and Cannon all said they're going to play next season, so that's like three free agent signings right See, there. Everyone, everyone, um, was, everyone was calling Hightower washed and he was going to retire. I knew he was coming back. Who's saying he's washed? I thought Jack said he was retiring. Really? I'll go back. I, I thought Jack I'll said they were going to cut. I, actually, I think you're right. I think Jack said they were going to cut him. I, I definitely think there's a high chance that one of these guys gets cut to save some cap space. But I think looking at the numbers, I think Hightower is just going to get his deal reworked. I think they are going to do some fine tuning with Hightower's contract. Um, Chung, I don't think it makes sense to cut him based on the cap hit that we're going to have to take if we get rid of him. I don't think it justifies it i think we may work it but and cannon's the guy that could be cut like he has a high chance we could save i think it's like seven million dollars in cap space or six million dollars seven million dollars in cap space so it's a strong chance he could get cut or gets his deal reworked i'm not sure but we're already seeing these big name guys get cut around the league with like van noy golden tate jared cook kyle rudolph yeah, I thought um, I saw someone. I can't remember who tweeted it. They they said the next week or two is going to be a bloodbath for for cuts. Yeah, because the 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 cap is going down, like the salary cap's going down. So um, it's going to be interesting who gets cut. Like, there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of guys that are losing jobs. And I mean, the Patriots. This is where the Patriots make their money. That's where Bill Belichick makes his money is picking up from the guys that cut. Um. You know, I'm fine with the Patriots going out and getting Kyle Rudolph. I kind of like that. Um, But, again, it starts with the quarterback situation. We need to go out and get a quarterback. I'm fine with them going out and getting Kyle Van Noy again. He pretty much only does well for the Patriots. He was shit on the way out, so I'm not interested anymore. I I don't know. I I Him and Amendola, dude. Him and Amendola had some friggin' sour grapes when they left. I don't get why. I don't know either. We friggin' made them tons of money. Anywho, is there any guy that you think is going to get cut? Any prediction for a cut? Lead could be out the Patriots. Could be anywhere. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Rob Wilson, then we'll sign him. Let's cut Michael Thomas, and then we can get him. Yeah. 
I like it. No, but seriously, who do you think that is going to get? Is there a thing that's going to get cut? Oh, Off the top of your head, there's no Leonard there's Fournette. No. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard <laughs> Fournette's going to get cut. It's not a good cut. It's not a good pl- fit. It's definitely not a good fit. That's the best fit um, for him, guys. You guys don't know football. Okay. I like how it's like those couple people like like months ago. This is asking, this is going on close to a year ago <laughs> that we the it had like ten months ago that these I don't forget, couple dude. kids come. Never forget. I don't forget. I never forget. Uh you're dead to me. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like Danny Football said, it's going to be a fun couple weeks. Uh, it's it's going to be a bloodbath. I mean, we're going to see deals made. We're hopefully going to see a lot of guys get signed, uh, and hopefully the Patriots have a big day on opening day of free agency, or we'll do nothing like last year and <laughs> we'll just be miserable going into the draft. Um But yeah, there's a big couple weeks in the NFL. A lot of a lot of guys. Um, on the move. So without further ado, wrapping up this uh, episode of big red zone, we're going to get to our favorite topic. People's topic. It's the people's topic, baby. People's topic. Minor for people's topic. You write in every week uh, on our Instagram and Twitter at Big Red Zone. Hit us with a follow. Also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Quest for 100 subscribers is still on. We're almost there, people. Keep pushing. Uh, if you, if we get 100 subscribers, Danny Football will tattoo on his head Big Red Zone right on his forehead. I'll do it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, and so subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button on this video as well as all our videos. Uh, producer John, what do we got for people's topics this week? So I kind of put out the, the prompt an hour ago. So we're <laughs> a little light this week. Oh, and I'm not, and I'm not taking any responsibility. Oh, no. <laughs> um, first one comes from Kevin. What underscore would Kevin Curly. Say? Hey, my boy, Kevin. Well, no, the, oh, oh, Kevin. Uh, it's a, it's no, a Kevin, saying, it's a Kevin Kev- filled month. It's a lot of Kevins in the last two weeks. This is what? the best Kevin easily. Here we go. Hey. Better than last week's Don't Kevin? You. This is my no, boy, Kevin. Kevin. Kev, well, last week was my boy, Kevin. I'd go, I'd go Kevin. Oh. What's his last name? Schlie, 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 Schlie Uber. <laughs> Schluber. <laughs> anyway. Kevin underscore Curly. We'll What's get him more? on the show when you guys can decide after that. Man, I need to just get this question out. Come on. <laughs> It'll never We're trying happen. to stall. You, you only have a couple questions there, John. We're trying to list, list, stretch the segment I'm defending my man's out. honor here. What's more likely, Beal on the Celtics or Tatum somewhere else? Oof. Jesus Christ. I'm going to say Beal on the Celtics because I don't want to even think about Tatum. Oh, my this, God. This I, think I, just had, I think I just went into a dark place. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm going to say Beal. Oh, my God. That hurt. I don't want to even think about Tatum. Oh think positively. God. Hey, I don't – Kevin's already he, stressing me out. No, he asks, he asks the tough questions. This is what he does. He asks the tough questions. I think I just went into a dark place. Damn. Yeah, you just made him you're depressed here, dude. Kevin, oh last God. week we had all laughs. We were having a good time. Damn. Just kidding, Kevin. Thank you for writing in with a question. <laughs> you sound like a great guy. Love you, Kevin. Speaking of great guys <gasps> – Joseph underscore Celia asks, how many titles do you see Tatum and Brown winning together? Oh, my God, please. I hope it's 10. Um, <laughs> we got to win one. I hope we win no, something. It, it, needs to be, it needs to be more than one at this point. Um, I think they're both getting traded to the Nets. I and they're will winning snap my mic stand in half right now. Or the um, Lakers. I'll kill myself. Um, that's what I think about <laughs> that. What season are we in? What, what season is Can you tell? Jalen in right now? Can you tell? What? What season is Jalen in right now? Fourth? Fifth? I don't know. It feels like he's played for about 20 years. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what their window is. I think they need to get at least three. Well, they got Tatum for the next six years. I think they got Jalen for the next five years. Yeah, three. Three's good. They need at least two. I, I'm more realistic. I think they need at least two. <laughs> one like, less. That's realistic. <laughs> I, I think the most realistic is hopefully one. 
But That's being, bare I minimum, guess, though. KG, I'm Ray optimistic. Allen, and Pierce won one. All right, then zero. I, 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 I hope we win one. Do you see what's on the other side? They need like, you gotta beat not, these. They, you still gotta beat these teams to win one. If you could beat them once, you could beat them three times. I don't think it's that easy. But we need we need. It's not just them. Like we need the team around them. Like they we they can't do it on their own. They need they need to go out and get Danny has to get on the phone and get some guys with them too. Like that's not it's not just Jalen and Jason. Like they can only do so much. So, um, I'm hoping for at least two. At least one, maybe two. At least one. But I, See, I think because they never said on the Celtics. So who oh knows? I think they're gonna. I think they're oh, gonna don't even stop titles. with this depressing topic. I think they're gonna win six titles, but it's gonna be on six different teams. They're just gonna keep getting <laughs> traded to different teams together as a package deal, kind of like the Olsen Christ. twins. Oh my god! Kind of like the Olsen twins. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your questions this week. I say it. Oh, John, what did you got a question for us? We talked about people's AEW for a couple minutes. Oh my God! What do you got for people? What's the one question? Do you think Kevin from last we week? We got three minutes left. Do you think Kevin from last week would have won the dunk contest if he was in it? I think he could have. Oh, in his prime, he definitely would have had a shot. I think he would have beat them in his prime. I I would put money on it. I if think he pulled out that pull up dunk that he was talking about, that easily would have yeah. been the best dunk of the night. I think there's videos of him dunking on YouTube. That, that's definitely something to look up. Uh, did they we have three... the technology to do that? That's a good question. That's another great question. Danny Football and producer John coming up with great questions. Kevin Schluber. Um, dunk. <laughs> dunk. Uh, they would have had to have like a huge ass, here. like huge ass cameras that they happen to have one at Mission Hill in Boston. Jesus. Oh, there's one on here. This is different, but it says Kevin Schluber in the Geraldo Hunk contest, 1995. Okay. I don't know if we'll see any dunking in that, but. See a lot of hunking. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> he is a hunk. Um, well, anyways, I guess that's, that's the end of that. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, my thanks to the two people, that, Kevin and um, – Joseph Celia, uh, writing in. Just Celia, I saw. I think I Dude, saw. We uh, on, uh, <clears throat> we got uh, the St. Patrick's Day episode next week, and Miss Red's March birthday. Miss Red's birthday, dude. Mrs. Red's birthday is on March seventeenth. That's true. So we got a uh, jam packed episode next we week. Got, we got to get to brackets. We got. We're gonna like, have St. Patrick's Day. We're gonna have Mrs. Red's big birthday, and we're gonna have UMass Lowell in the goddamn bracket. We're gonna be ready to go. We're gonna have a lot of prizes for next week. Uh, my thanks to Danny Football and producer John. Let's for go Riverhawks, baby! As Let's go. Always, I'm rooting for the Riverhawks. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> have a great week, everyone. Oh, you froze. Say it again. <laughs> thanks for listening. And have a great week, everyone. Ah, uh, one more time. You froze again. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Thanks for listening. Have a great week, everyone. Bro, give it to me one more time. No, it didn't. <laughs> Stop. I can't take. You it. did freeze the first time.